the serial murders of dissidents and intellectuals, both in their own country and around the world. And one only has to look at how the Ahmadinejad government has treated protesters in the aftermath of their sham 2009 presidential elections to see just what they are capable of doing, not to mention their recent attempts at a failed assassination plan inside Washington, D.C. We see it demonstrated yet again, most recently in Baghdad's interpretation of the recently concluded MOU, their continuous, Iran's continuous eroding of the previously agreed upon conditions to include a dramatic reduction in the size of the habitable space within Camp Liberty, their refusal, refusal to allow for the transfer of personal possessions and the growing surveillance and eavesdropping efforts that are being installed in the confines of the camp as we speak. Not to mention erecting high walls and a near constant police force that will be inside the camp for less than a half a kilometer. Now, the, these recent efforts and the ones that are ongoing were done in all likelihood with the approval of, if not the direct participation by the MOIS. It's yet another clear example of how the Maliki government, through the manipulation and control by the Iranian government, is seeking the, 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 the systematic eradication of the residents of Camp Ezra. Maliki has already stated that he has arrest warrants for over 120 of the residents and has already mentioned that he wants the leaders extradited to Tehran. And as other members of the panel have already, have already mentioned, again, this is an effort to dismantle the MEK. He's even been so bold as to state, and this is a quote, Iraq is dealing with the residents of the camp as individuals and in accordance with the human rights principles and rules of international law enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. This is a blatant lie, especially when you do this in the context of the massacre of 43 innocent civilians just a few months ago and the wounding of well over 1,000, not to mention the recent rocket attacks on the camp. These actions demonstrate the length to which Maliki, the, Maliki's government will go to justify their current and more worrisome, their future actions. This statement alone is a clear indication of his intent. Given the conditions of Camp Liberty, most prisons in the civilized world have better conditions than what will exist at Camp Liberty. Yet what crimes have the innocent residents committed? Is it their desire for a normal life, one that for the past 25 years has been void of basic human rights that we all enjoy? Is it their efforts to see a pluralist political system in their home country, one where freedom of speech and assembly exists, and where there is gender equality and a separation of church and state? Is it a crime to want these most basic of human rights? If it is, then we are all criminals. Dictatorial regimes like the current regime in Iran, regimes that subjugate their own people, they're quick to designate anyone who, depose, who opposes them as subversives and even, as they repeatedly describe the MEK and the residents of Camp Ashraf, as terrorists. Camp Ashraf has been under the protection of U.S. forces since its residents voluntarily handed over their weapons in 2003 and have been recognized as protected persons and non-combatants under the Fourth Geneva Convention. When the U.S. began its withdrawal from Iraq, that protection was transferred to the Maliki government with assurances that they would continue to treat the men, women, and children there with basic human respect. 